Carl, you've always been one of the most disciplined anglers on the tour, and when I say on the tour, I mean on the tour in Australia. Um, you always worked incredibly hard, but since you've gone stateside, you've taken it to another level. And, and the discipline that you seem to show within your fitness and also your lifestyle in terms of your diet, um, you've really cranked that up. Yeah. Um, run us a little bit through your fitness regime um, because I don't ever remember you doing a hell of a lot when you were living in Australia. No, no. I, um, what happened when I, when I first moved to America, um, the food was totally different. You know, like I, I had to adapt to a totally different country, different lifestyle and everything. And the food, the healthier food here was a lot easier to get in Australia. And because the food was so different in America, I was just eating whatever and, and whatever was there. And the easiest food was usually the worst for you. And uh, towards, the, towards my third year, um, towards the end of my third year, I had a really bad year, didn't make the elites, and the last couple of tournaments, I was just eating bad, eating bad, everyone around you is eating bad, so you just do it, and by two, three o'clock in the day, I was that drained and zapped of my energy. I, you know, the last three or four hours, I'd get off the water, and I, I just, sometimes, I remember like grabbing my rods off the deck, putting him in the hotel and laying on the bed on top with the, my fishing clothes on and just passing out. Like I was that exhausted. And it was from early mornings and late nights and, and fishing hard. But what happened was I started, I, I, got, I looked at golf, basically that's what helped me. And the, uh, that's not that long ago that Tiger Woods came into the sport and you could be unhealthy. The guys were smoking and drinking and they were the best in the world and they were smashing it. Tiger Woods came in and changed everything. He rewrote the book, he, didn't he? He rewrote the golfing book. And now, you better be an athlete to be a golf player. And who would have ever thought that? And I started going along those lines. And all of a sudden, when I started eating, and I've always worked out and done triathlons, and I enjoyed it, but I never took it to a serious level. I decided to take it to that level in 2014 because 2014 was it was honestly my last shot. If I didn't make the elites, I think that was it. I had to just come back to Australia and and it was over. And I treated that year like that was it was everything, and that's what I put into it. And when I started eating good and working out, all of a sudden, when I was waking up, I wasn't tired, and when I was going to bed. I was full of energy going to bed. I was going to bed feeling great and excited for the next day and I, my mental focus and my energy lasted right through the day. And when you say you're going fishing, I'm on the water at sometimes at daylight, which can be four o'clock in the morning, 4.30, I'd be off at nine o'clock at night. When you get off the water, you've got to fill the boat up, you've got to wipe the boat down, you've got to put your fishing gear away, you've got to fuel up, get your boat back to the hotel, eat dinner, get dinner, study for the next day, weather patterns, Google Earth, you know, everything, and then try and settle down and go to sleep after eating food. Like, it's, it, your day's not over when you get off the water. The, the more I went into fitness and the better I ate, the, just the better I felt, and I knew, the, I, I, I knew that right then and there that this was the new way. And, and CrossFit seems to be your thing at the moment. Out of everything, why did you choose CrossFit? We got, well, with working out and going to the gym, um, you know, it was, you know, they call them like beach muscles compared to like, I wanted to have practical muscle and it, CrossFit was a lot of core strength and a lot of endurance. And, you know, actually a big thing what happened at the start of 2014 is like casting all day and casting big A-rigs, you know, that they, they um, like, I, I popped a rib out casting like the A-rig and when I, ha when I went to a chiropractor to look at it, he just looked at my posture and just, I was like, I, my posture is, it was exactly the same as what you do when you look at the sounder and fish, your mm. shoulders forward, hunched, hunched over, over. And, and then that was a big thing, fishing through 2013, my back was hurting, my elbows, like it, stuff was starting to ache. So when I went and I saw someone about it, he said you need to work on your back muscles. So now I concentrate on my back, my shoulders, I've pulled my shoulders back, my posture's better now, I've got no pain all of a sudden, I'm feeling great. There were so many advantages to it. And CrossFit is more endurance. So like a lot, the muscle, I get up and down off the deck hundreds of times in one day. So it's like a continual movement. And those CrossFit movements are practical muscle. It's stuff that you use every single day. And that's why I went to that. And, and I, I still go, 
go to the gym because I like to concentrate on just a back and shoulder workout to pull my shoulders back or leg strength. So I still mix it up and, I, and, and then with the cardio side of things, waking up in the morning and going for a run, I do it nearly every day now. Like there's not, there's not many days that I miss a run because when I get back from a run, my everything is going, you know, 100 miles an hour and I get motivated and I'm like, it just gets me ready for the day, it gets me thinking right and um, between the two of them, that was 100% why I made the elites. I just, I changed my lifestyle and I put, instead of putting 80% into everything, I was doing 120% of this is what I want and what do I need to do to get it and that was a massive part of being able to do that. Aaron Martins, who was uh, the Angler of the Year champion this year, he's a big advocate of running. He does a lot of it, yeah. um, but he says he doesn't get to do much during the season just because you're on the road so much. Yeah. Do you find? Do you struggle to find time to do your workouts while you're on the road? Yeah. It, what, what I've done now is you have to make it a priority. It, it it can't be oh if I've got time I'll do it. And um, so what happened is there's a Planet Fitness, it's a, it's a big um, gym in America and it's everywhere and it's $10 a month and you can bring someone with you. So Kayla started getting into the fitness as well this year and we would drive all day, I would run in the morning, then we would, when we'd have two, three days drive sometimes, we would drive and then towards the end of the day, just Google Planet Fitness, there'd be one just off the highway, pull in there, hour workout, shower, back in the truck and drive until we're tired. So yeah, it's it, interesting, people quite often say, oh, I don't have the energy to exercise, but the, the, the funny thing is, exercising actually gives you energy. That's so, right. You know, it, it deals with the issue. It's the, it's the cheapest, you know, antidepressant, any everything. It's the cheapest thing you can ever do because it does, you just have to do it and you'll feel alive, you know, you'll feel energized, you'll be motivated. So there, there's so many advantage. I can't tell you enough about how much it's helped me and, um, you know, you just see what it's doing in other sports and just even for, from what I put on social media, it's given other people because what I see can motivate me with, you know, stars and sports stars with what they're doing and some people have seen what I've done and maybe it'll help them change their life and, you know, help to get fit. I'm many of the other elite guys starting to focus a bit more on keeping themselves in shape? I think so, yeah. It's like, it's gonna be a slow process, but you wait until a few young guys start dominating and you know, in the, that older way starts going out, it, it's gonna turn around pretty quick. I got no doubt we're just maybe five years behind golf or maybe a little bit more, but it's, it's gonna swing that way and it's gonna swing that way fast. You, you need to adapt and keep up to speed, otherwise you get left behind. Well, my, you know, like I've always said, I, I'm, I don't have the experience these guys have. They, they have lived and breathed largemouth and, and they're fishing. And the, the, what Aussies mightn't understand is what I did by going over there. My whole life of fishing helped me a little bit, but it was like starting again. I scrapped everything I knew and had to start again with everything from start to finish. I, I just had to, from a beginner. And by doing that, I had to speed the process up by being in better shape, having you know the mental edge on them, more determination, wanting it more, they're the things that, that help me push past the barriers that I had like 40 years experience. Because you can't change that lack of experience, but no. you're in control of those other things. That's it. Um, one of the most important elements that I see you, you need to have to be a good tournament angler is to be analytical and to be able to collate a data bank of knowledge and experiences. And the three guys that I've seen in my 12 odd years with ABT who are best at that are you, okay. Steve Morgan, and Chris Hickson. Yeah. Um, you guys don't miss anything when you're on the water and you, and you log it away. Um, do you think that's a, 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 an important element to, to see what's going on and be very perceptive and, and make the small adjustments? Because sometimes the adjustments you need to make are only small. Yeah, they can be very small, but it's, um, yeah, the, the, just putting that, you know, that memory bank away and, and, and being able to draw on it is huge. But, you know, almost 
fishing the conditions has been you know a big one like I was always one for you know or a lot of people said you need to write down like in spring in this temperature but there's so many variables in fishing it's it, you would you'd be writing a, for two hours at you, the end yeah, of the day at the end of the day and that particular situa situation may never ever happen again so I'm a big one from being able to draw from a lifetime experience and then put it to use in the exact in the situation I'm in right then and there you know not saying oh the water temperature is this this time of year that they'll be doing what I did like two years ago because the water color could be different the the, the whole the, the way the fishery is could be different with bait and there's there's so many variables to it it's a um, the biggest thing with fishing is and what a lot of guys make the mistake of is thinking they already know it all and that's what I've never ever done in my career anyone that I meet I feel like I can learn something from whether it's good or bad I never ever have act or think that like you know I'm the best and I, it's because I know everything I learn every single day and you got to be a sponge like if you're a kid and you want to do you know what I'm doing and you want to be a good fisherman you have to be a sponge and soak up every little tiny bit of information anyone gives you. Uh, looking forward to 2016, um, what are some of your goals? This is that 2016 is... But is because <laughs> as a first time elite angler you get two years before you get booted yep. if, you, if you don't finish high enough. Yep. Next year's your second year, it's make or break. Yep. Yeah, so it's uh, you know there's a little bit of pressure on me there to make sure I get up into the um, into the more AOY points. So I'm there for for life, but I'm more excited about 2016 than I've probably ever been for any year. Like I've I've got through my rookie year. I know where I need to be at now in in every level, and I know what I'm up against. I know where my boat's got to be at before I hit the water, and I'm going to be ready. So I'm excited really excited for 2016 more than anything but my goals are obviously you know make the Bassmaster Classic like that's 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 my that's where I'm visioning and, now. And is it top 40 in AOY to get into the yeah, Classic? top 40 AOY or um, win a Bassmaster Open but um, you know I've got to I've just got to have a consistent year and in doing that you can sacrifice those couple top finishes that I've had but I've got to look at the long term stuff if I make the classic it could change my whole life and really cement my career as a as a professional bass angler um, you know you're still the leading money earner here in ABT in the bass events and, and <laughs> I think it's been five years since you cashed your last check and you achieved that largely because you were just so consistent you you were always there yeah um, I think it's only a matter of time before you acquire that state side um, before you head back um, what's on your, your wish list of things to do before you go so I've got to, when, since I've been back I've got up to the barra tour like that's but <laughs> catching barra like barramundi is probably the one species that I'm really addicted to it's just something that I have to do like every year and um, so I got up there and fished the ABT barra tour which was awesome um, so I got my barra fix and then I'm um, just catching up with mates like just no, my whole year is is pretty serious and I have to like you know on social media I, I, I try and do you know I try and you know do as much cool stuff as I can and you know when you're happy you catch fish you know it's just a different um, it's different to anything else you know in Australia when I did when I started really doing well I was I was happy and I was enjoying my fishing and I've got it you've got, I've got to make sure that I do that you know in between um, being going against the hundred of the best guys in the world so go, being home fishing with my mates is like what I lived for you know growing up and so I try and fish and go hunting with my mates catch up with my family and um, you know do all, all that sort of stuff to really get as much as I can before I go back but being home, I'm in front of my computer every single day. You know, through the day, I'm talk I've got two phones. I got my Australian phone, I got a US phone, and through the middle of the through the day, my Aussie phone rings and emails. And then from about 10 o'clock at night till um, six in the morning, my US phone rings and goes. So, <laughs> so when do you get a chance to sleep? There's not a lot of sleep because as soon as I get an email with ordering my boat with sponsors, if I don't, if I sleep till seven in the morning and get up, they're get finishing work enough. and I've lost another mm. day so people don't see the behind behind the scenes stuff that goes on to make it happen like I'm always every single year I've been 
this close to not being able to go back and I have to work every single day and can just grind and hustle and do everything I can to make it each year happen. It doesn't just happen. I've got to go and make it happen because nothing comes to you. You've got to, you've got to chase it. Hard word breeds success, doesn't it? Um, when's the first Elite Series event? When does it all start again? Um, I think the 17th of March, so I got a bit of time. Um, it's uh, it's on that Winnie Bay, so it's a it's a it's going to be a different one. It's kind of like the Chesapeake Bay, a little bit unknown. So I'm kind of excited for that one. The one the ones that I thought I was going to do good at, I, you know, I didn't do we any good. We expected you to do well yeah. at Havasu and Clear Lake. Know, Look clear, how they went. I know. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, it's going to be the classic's going to start, and that's you know being at the classic and not fishing it is going to is going to pull for some pretty big motivation for me because I just want to you know the classic is going to if I make the classic, my family and my friends are going to have to come and watch what I do. Like that's been Morgan and I've already talked yeah. about it. You're in the classic. We're on a plane over. I think there's going to be plenty of guys that are going to come over and um, and watch me fish, and and if they get to see how big the Bassmaster Classic is. That's probably like my my dream now that I can you know that gives me a lot of motivation is being on the Bassmaster Classic stage and looking up and seeing my family and friends in the crowd like that just sends shivers up my spine. So, um, you know, Steve and I are incredibly passionate about ABT and what we've created, and we're incredibly proud of what you've achieved. Um, so to have the opportunity to speak to you, um, we're incredibly grateful for. Before we wrap up for the year, have you got anything else you'd like to say to the ABT family? Yeah, just, you know, it, it's, it's, it really is mind blowing when you think that, you know, at 16, 15, I fished my first ABT tour um, and guys, you know, took me under their belt and showed me and learnt, you know, and I learnt from them and I just, through fishing and through tournament fishing, I've had the greatest life ever. You know, I could, I've met the greatest people I can ever imagine meeting, and um, and that has all come through ABT. And for Steve and yourself and people behind that, their dream was for that for one day they may be able to create someone that could go to America and compete with those guys. And we and, have, and it's and, you. And now, and on that dream, so for that is that just that there alone is so it's so crazy to think about that I've come from Toowoomba fishing small ABT tournaments and now I'm in America versus the best in the world. It, it still doesn't really sink in, um, but it just shows that you know hard work, determination, and doing what you love, you can you can do anything. And, um, you know, I just want to thank ABT and thank all the supporters and all the people out there that have gotten behind me and um, motivated me and given me support. And it's, without that, I wouldn't be here. Well, mate, you are a true statesman for uh, for ABT and tournament fishing and for Australia. Uh, all the best in 2016. Uh, thanks for having me. It's been awesome.